Welcome to Selling Digital, where we help you turn your design skills into a thriving online business. Let's dive into today's tutorial and start designing a life you love. And we're going to start off in Photo P today. And I am going to click on Open from Computer to open up my SVG file. My first SVG file, as you can see, is this beautiful bow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up the layers panel. When you are doing this process, it will not work if the clipping mask isn't done correctly. You will notice that when you get over to Canva, you will not be able to remove the image that we're putting inside and you will be so frustrated that you missed some step. And that has been happening to a few of you. So this is the portion, if you're having that issue, I assume that this is the portion that you um, are messing up or something's getting mixed up right here. So in the layers panel over here, you can see that we have a folder and it says layer. And then underneath that, it has a portion of the bow. And if we select that, you can see which portion of the bow that is. It's that light pink portion. And then we have another layer, which is again, the folder, another folder. And inside that folder is this other layer. So what these folders are, are groups, okay? And so we need to take them out of there because you cannot put a clipping mask on a group or on a folder, okay? Just think of it as a folder. You can't put a clipping mask on a folder because it doesn't know what shape it's clipping to. You have to put a clipping mask right above the shape that you want it to go inside. I hope that makes better sense. So to take them out of the group, the easiest way is just to grab the layer and then pull it down and you'll see how it's just moved its position a little bit there. So now we can grab this layer and we can hit delete. If you do this process and you hit delete and you notice a portion of your SVG gone, then you didn't do that part right. Hit control Z to undo the action and then just try it again. So look a little bit closer on this one. When we pull down on this bow here, will notice it has moved over as well. And so now this one is also empty. You can also check that by clicking the arrows and nothing happens, okay? It's not opening up. There's no image that's opening up. So you know that it's empty. Also, if you click on this layer, it highlights. If you click on this layer, it highlights. But if you click on the folder layer, nothing highlights, you're safe to delete. As always, Control Z is your best friend in almost every program, it is your undo buttons. I need to get this layer here on the same layer as this one here. So to do that, all we have to do is select each layer. Holding shift key, we can select both of them at the same time, right click, and then go down to where it says merge layers. There we go. So you'll know you have it done right when everything is filled in and it's all the same color. And we are also just with one layer here in the layers panel. Make sure that instead you don't group. That's not the same thing. We don't wanna group the layers, we want to merge the layers. All right, so from here, now we can add that clipping mask. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that digital paper and we're going to pop that in as a clipping mask. And then you'll see over here in the layers panel that it's below, we need it to be above. And then once it's above, we can just right click on that layer and we can click on clipping mask. As you can see, that image clips right into the entire SVG file, and so now we are done. All we have to do at this point is to make sure we save it as a PSD. We're gonna go File, and then Save as PSD. All right, so now that that part is done, we're gonna do the next part, and that is pulling in our next SVG files. All right, so now you can see that I have already gone and opened up my next SVG file and that is the letter M. There are times when you can put multiple layers on the same one. Let's, for instance, the M and the A. There are some times where you can put the M over here and the A over here and do your clipping masks, do two separate clipping masks, pull them into Canva and everything works out perfectly in one PSD file. However, more often than not, for whatever reason, that does not work for me. Only one of them will work out as a true placeholder in Canva and then the other one won't. So in my opinion, it is just easier if you put each SVG on its 
in its own PSD file because then you can guarantee that it's going to work and you don't have to do any of the extra steps later if it doesn't work. So for me, I'm just more about let's just be efficient. You know what works, do that thing, you know? So for this, all I'm gonna do is follow the same rules. I've already gone ahead and tidied up my layers panel like we went over in the last one with the bow. And so now I'm just going to pull in my digital paper and then clip it. So I have chosen just another digital, I'm not sure what happened there. I have chosen another digital paper here and we are just going to make it large enough. And then again, we will move the checkered picture above. And if, if you don't remember from before, you can use any image you want. You can use a picture of your dog if you want it or a sunset or any other file you have to put inside. It doesn't matter because this isn't actually going to get used. It's just as long as it can cover your SVG, that's all that matters. All right. So all we have to do now is right click and then do a clipping mask. There we go. So we're done. We're going to save this as a PSD. I'm going to go ahead and do the letter A and then we will meet back over in Canva for the next step. Now we are over in Canva and all we have to do is upload those PSD files and I do have another SVG file that we're gonna need for this sample and so I need to upload that as well. When you are choosing your files, if you don't see your PSD file anywhere, check right here to make sure that where it says custom files, you're gonna want to click on that and then click on all files then your PSD files should pop up. Just wanted to put that out there in case anybody runs into that issue. It's kind of one of those frustrating things that can happen. After everything is uploaded, you're gonna find them in your projects folder, not in your uploads, so make sure you check there. And if for any reason you're not seeing your files right here, just go up here to where it says search and type in either .psd for the file type or whatever you named your file so that it's easily popped up and then that, okay. So to start off, let's go ahead and just click on the letter M. And then there's two ways to remove the placeholder. You can either double click and then just delete, or we could right click and then go down to detach image. Either way is gonna work fine. Some people just have an issue with the double click because you do have to do it in a certain amount of speed to be able to get that to pop up correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that one and I'm going to shrink the letter M down and just pop it right up here. Now we need to go on to the next frame, but Canva gets a little bit tricky. And what will happen is if I click on this right here, it's going to replace this with this and it's going to be very frustrating. So what you wanna do is you wanna add a page, make sure it's selected and then do the next one. And we will double click and delete. Okay, so now I have the A and I'm gonna grab the A and pop it up shrink it down and basically just put it up here for now. Okay, so the next one we have to do is we have to get the bow. So I'm gonna go back down to page two, make sure that it's selected. There we go. And we're gonna take the placeholder out of that one. Perfect. And I'm going to drag this one up and put it right up here. Okay, so the last thing that I need to do is bring in the other SVG portion that I needed to do, and that is in my uploads, and it's right here. Oh wait, is that it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep that right there. And now all we have to do is really just build our design, okay? So I'm going to, right off the bat, I'm going to just shrink the bow down there. And actually, I think I'll put the bow back down here on page so we are just selecting both the A and the M and we're going to hold the alt key down and we're just duplicating. So now I can tell, oh, those are way too big. So we're just going to grab all of it at once. You can see they're all highlighted and we're just shrinking them down so that they fit. Okay, good. The next step is that we want to get everything tidied up. We want the spaces in between each one to be accurate before we move on. So I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to click on the more, the three dots, and then we're going to go with space evenly and then tidy up. And you'll see how it just spaces it out for you. Now everything is even and tidied up. I'm going to group these together temporarily so that they're easily copy and pasted down 
our page. So I'm gonna do Control G, and now we have them all together. I can easily move them and then line them up. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, and I'm just going to copy and paste two, three, four, five. Now we have five, but they're not even or tidied up in any way. So I'm going to just grab all of them. And now I'm going to do that same thing. Click the three dots and the more, space evenly, and we're gonna space evenly. Perfect. Now everything's nice and lined up. We're going to grab all of them and I'm going to just arrange exactly where I want it to be on the page. And that is centered as you can see by that pink line in the center. And the last thing I want to do is simply ungroup everything. And so I just click and hit ungroup and do that with each one slightly carefully so that we don't, you know, move them out of their space. So now that that part's done, this bow is actually just the background to this bow, okay? And when you put a bow on like this, if you were to fill it, let me give you an example. Uh, let's just use this green paper. If I just fill that, it could look okay, but personally for the design, I didn't really like the way that that looked after I filled in the rest of these. And I wanted the bow to have a bit more structure after it was filled in. So I went ahead and I just kept the background layer without having a frame on it so that the customer uh, or you can choose to change the color accordingly depending on the design. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and just resize the frame portion of the bow and line it up with the background. So you can, obviously every design is different, but I like the idea of choosing this type of design as an example because it can show you how we can mix um, other images, like for instance, this SVG or even other elements within our design and only portions of the design are frames and others are not. Makes it a good example for anything you may encounter moving forward. So. I'm just kind of moving this around with my arrow keys, getting it exactly where I want it. And that looks perfect to me. So I'm just going to grab both of those together and I'm going to scroll up, move it up, and then I'm going to size them while they're together to be the size that I want. And there we go, it's in the middle. Okay, so we have finalized our full design. So let's test it out just to make sure that it does work like we want it to work. So I have some of these glitter papers here, so we're just gonna use these as examples. So the customer or you, if you are the one using this, will be dragging, dropping into that letter M. Then they will drag, they will drop into that letter A, and then with the bow, they could drag and drop into the bow. And then if they wanted to change the color of the outline of the bow, they just select that portion, coming over here, changing the color of the bow or the outline to whatever color they would like. And that is how that is created. So it does have more steps than just having one single frame, but these types of designs that are a little bit more work on our end sell extremely well on websites like Etsy. The next video that comes after this one will be the video where we go over how to set these up for selling on platforms like Etsy, Shopify, or wherever it is that you sell your items. As a bonus in this video, I have made this specific Canva template free for you to use and do as you wish with that. You will also be able to see what I include when I do sell a Canva template. You'll be able to see the type of things that I include, give you a full, well-rounded view of what it's like to purchase, or not really purchase because it's free, but you'll be able to go through the checkout process of getting a Canva template, and then as well as downloading that Canva template and seeing uh, basically the full circle of purchasing a Canva template and selling a Canva template all in this experience for you guys. So this template here, by navigating over to sellingdigital.vip, 
If you are unfamiliar, that is our new URL for our website. And once you come to the main page, this is what it's going to look like right here. And going to the freebie section, we've made very easy for you. All you have to do is right at this top banner, it'll say download free. And then you just hit where it says click here and it's going to take you right to where our freebies live. So every once in a while, I will pop up a new one here. So there might be something new that you have yet to download. All you'll have to do is click this is obviously showing the main image here. Then the next one, it just explains how to go about using the freebie as far as, you know, how to click and get your Canva template and access it. And then there's always a tips and tricks area for all the freebies now. And it kind of just helps any of those questions you might have during the download process or the usage process. Uh, when you do add to cart, it will head on right over here then you'll just check out put in your information down below continue to payment and this is free as you can see and then from there you will have the option to download and after you open that pdf this is what it's going to look like exactly like this you're going to get this PDF, except for it's going to be clickable. So where it says click here, you're actually going to be able to click here and you'll be able to use any of the other links that are in there. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with the others who might benefit. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. For even more tips, exclusive videos, and the chance to request personalized tutorials, head over to my Ko-fi page. Become a VIP member to gain access to commercial use files perfect for print on demand and so much more. Join our community of creators and let's design a life you love together. See you guys in the next video.